Hey there! Today we're going to be talking about the Wingsung 233, which is an interesting pen. I initially thought that's a little Parker 51 like, but then I thought it's not quite Parker 51. And I wasn't 100% sure what to make of it. A little, isn't it a little Schaefer Snorkel esque? Not entirely either, but I, I don't know. Maybe it just doesn't resemble anything. Maybe it's just uh, the archetype of pens and it just activates all kinds of other pens in my mind. Moving on. So today we'll be talking about this pen. I will cover the past of the pen. I'll do a writing sample and I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about this pen. Let's get started. All right, here we go with the Wingsung 233. Here you have the pen right next to a Pilot Metropolitan, so a little bit of an idea of size. It's it's a fairly narrow pen, but as you can see, it's about the same size as a Metropolitan. Packaging, there wasn't much. There was just this pen condom. Let's get that out of the way. Uh, I found these on eBay for $18.63. That is Canadian, so that's even less in US. That rhymed. And then it's kind of a... As I said, is it Parker 51? Is it Schaefer Snorkel? It, it, it reminds me a little bit of both. Kind of a, a 51 barrel and a Schaefer Snorkel type cap. But, you know, who am I? Let's go over the parts of this pen. So, on top here we have a finial that's just part of the cap. We have this clip, which is really quite nice and spring-loaded, which I really quite enjoyed. Then on the bottom of the cap there it um, it says what I assume reads Wing Sun 233 I mean I'm pretty sure about the 233 part right Arabic numerals but I'm assuming these characters mean Wing Sun and here on the back it says Wing Sun which is partially rubbed off it seems interesting for the engraving then we have this barrel nice burgundy color that I have seen on Parker 51's this color so that's kind of interesting and it does have the little hole in the back that the uh, a lot of these pens have. Um, I'm assuming to not create a vacuum or something, but maybe it's just part of the manufacturing process. I haven't fully thought this through. The cap comes off, and then we have this very interesting... I don't have... One second. I've had a bit of leaking with this one. Okay. So we have, I come, I'll come to that, we have the section, tapers down, and I will say this, I really like the way this section looks. The way they have tapered that, and then you have this nib, and it's one of those wing sung nibs that wraps around the feed, which I like, also in itself, by the way, of course, very Schaefer Snorkel-esque, right? And we have the feed, but I really like this. It's a very streamlined, smooth design, right? It just tapers down perfectly into that nib and I I'll be honest I really like that we have an ink window which is really cool because the pen is fed through a an aerometric converter right so inside there is a sack you just fill that up with ink uh, bottle ink right and uh, and that's pretty much it now I've had leakage there so I'll keep you posted on my attempts to see if we, uh, see if we can we can fix that. I also have ink in the barrel. And I've also noticed that this cap has a clutch mechanism. You can sort of see it there. And that when you... That's a very hard click. I think that aerosolizes some ink and I've had a lot of ink splatter around here, which I don't think is a leak. I think that's really just from the resonance of the uh, nib of the clicking mechanism, if that makes any sense. Uh, it's a nicely sized pen, really 51-esque in size, I would say, and it posts very securely. Now, of course, the problem with all the leakage is you get ink on the barrel. I think I cleaned the cap right before I, I shot this review, so it's okay, but I have had this, and then you don't notice it. You pull the cap off, and then there's ink all over your hand. You, this, this is pretty much all from this particular pen, what's on my fingers, so that's a bit of an issue, but I'll come back to that in likes and dislikes. Let's zoom out just a tiny bit. Let's just see how we can make this right. So we have a 
233. The nib is, yes, yeah, one of those unspecified fine medium things. And the ink is Waterman Havana Brown. I really don't know why I picked that because it doesn't match the pen at all, but I just felt that way. Right, right. I find it to write pretty consistently. Haven't had issues with it running dry, but it's not the smoothest nib in the world, which I think you can hear. A lot of feedback, but in itself kind of nicely tuned. Um, I mean, it's 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 wet wet-ish. Um, I also noted it's a steel nib, so always with a lot of care. But I did feel. You could squeeze out a bit of line variation, which if you like such a thing is kind of nice. Then there is reverse writing, which is surprisingly smooth. I would almost say smoother than the regular writing, which is weird. It also does make the nib finer, so I would say you have a, a reasonable medium the proper way up, and then you go to something finer. This says funer. Oh. At L. What the hell is going on? Anyway, um, but. Whoa! Yeah, weird. Um, so you can definitely use it as a final nib, which is kind of neat because I know there are some of my friends out there like to flip their nib around to get a finer uh, writing experience. So that works quite well. So I think what we have left is to discuss what I like and what I don't like. Ew. Oh, that was horrid. Uh, about the um, Brian, that was horrid, Brian. Uh, sorry. Uh, let's talk about what I like and don't like about the Wing Song Two Thirty Three. What do I like? What do I not like about the Wing Song Two Thirty Three? Well, it is a pen. I will give it that. It's also an affordable pen, which is really nice. But I do have some issues with it. Um, is it cute looking? Yeah, I think it is actually a fun looking pen. And I mean that. I, I think they, they did a good job on that. Uh, nice, some simple details, but it's kind of nice, right? That, that those lines in the cap, those grooves, that, that just, just elevates the model a little bit in my mind. These wraparound nibs that Wing Sung does, I kind of like. I think they're quite neat. I think it just looks cool. So I've always really liked that. I like the fact that there's an ink window, right? Especially in a aerometric converter pen. I think it's nice. You can see how much ink is left by having a look at the ink window. I think that's really nice. But having said that, it feels a little cheap and it leaks. So, can you fix the leak? Probably. I will try to update you on that. I also have the feeling that this, uh, these, this, this cap design with that clutch mechanism on the inside, which is really hard to show off. You can see them a little bit there, those metal things um, that, that grasp the cap. I have the feeling that that is such a solid mechanism that's great that it keeps the cap on but I also have the feeling that it aerosolizes ink because of the click I think there's a little bit of a vibration and you get ink in the cap because I've had a lot of ink in this cap and it's not just coming from that leak because even when I have it how do I know this because I store it nib up and then there is ink here if there's ink here, that may be from the leak, but there's ink all over the nib and the feed and down there, where I don't think it would flow up against gravity. It's not magic. It's science! So, you know, that was, sorry, that was Bill Nye. 
we'll get into the discussion another time. So, so that, that's a bit of an issue. The leak is an issue, yeah. It's also not the most expensive pen in the world, right? You're talking about $20, but I mean, $20 for a leaking pen is quite a lot. The problem with these things is always, I never know if it's the one pen I have that leaks or if they all leak. So if you have this pen, please comment and let everyone know if yours leaks as well. I will keep you posted on seeing if I can fix it with a bit of silicone grease on the inside, which is very likely that that's possible. Having said that, yeah, look, it's a $20 pen. It, it's that, right? That's all I can really say about it. I'm not saying it's a terrible pen. Writing experience was not my favorite, but you could smooth the nib a little bit. It does have a reasonable amount of tipping, which is actually quite nice, so you, you could smooth that a bit without <laughs> grinding away the entire nib. Spring-loaded clip is nice. As I said, there is a pretty good eye for detail, and overall I think it's quite nice, just that the leaking is an issue. Right, even at twenty dollars, you don't want to buy a leaking pen, even for a dollar. I would assume. So, in itself, interesting. I hope this was useful, and I will gladly see you later. Bye bye.